you be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten a belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, Take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication, to that the end keep alert and always preserve in the circulation of all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message will be given to me to make known the boldness, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am a master, a master in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
very message that reveals how we may personally experience the intimacy of God in our lives through Jesus Christ. That is what causes many of Jesus' disciples to go away, to move in the other direction. It leads many to turn their back on this Jesus, the one who is the divine gift of life through his body and through his blood. Well, enough of that. I mean, how about a little joke, okay? That's maybe a little too serious for us this morning. So there was a priest that was presiding over the liturgy in a large cathedral, and he sensed that his microphone wasn't working. And so he began the liturgy as we're accustomed to. The Lord be with you. And the response.
to enter into battle. But with this understanding this morning that the church was in a different type of battle. The church was in battle with hostile cosmic forces, spiritual forces of evil, Paul says. Forces that are opposed to the reign of God. And so they are to do battle with an arsenal. And this is an alternate arsenal. And we miss this part mostly. The alternate arsenal that Paul speaks of is truth and righteousness and peace and faith and the word of God. The belt he urged them to put around their waist was truth. The breastplate, righteousness. The sword was the word of God. And I think these are great images for us. Paul begins with the belt of truth. And I think that is the foundational strength of any group of people. The ability to trust one another. The ability to be able to speak the truth in love towards one another. It's what makes up for a community that is cohesive. The opposite of speaking the truth would be bearing false witness, right? The opposite of speaking the truth would be gossip. Gossip that tears down a community, does not build up a community or make a community cohesive. To stand against and to stand Within the faith is to be immersed in the truth, not bearing false witness, not gossiping. So we need to learn to tame our tongues in order to build up the church or the community. How about the next thing? We have the breastplate of righteousness. Now this is not what it sounds like. It does not mean righteousness that you have to be right all the time. I mean, sometimes don't we argue with one another? And we don't really care. We just want to be right. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we do. We have arguments, even with those that are closest, the ones that we love the most in life, just because we want to be right. Well, that's not what righteousness is, my friends. It's not what it is at all. In fact, this righteousness might mean that you don't have to be right all the time. This isn't even about your rightness. This is about God's rightness and God's righteousness. And that coupled with this helmet of salvation, these are the things that guard our hearts in the knowledge that God has already defeated the enemy righteousness and salvation offered to all of us by Christ on the cross. It's not just that the armor belongs to God and God wears it. Paul tells us to put on the armor of God but the armor of God is God himself. That is what the armor is. God is the very armor thus making us armored by and with God. And scripture tells us that God is truth. God is perfect righteousness. God is our salvation. And so when we are armored in God, it builds up our faith and builds up our community. Let's move to the next image, and that's an image of shoes. How many of you put on shoes this morning? We put on shoes every day, I thank you. We put, we put on shoes every day. And shoes were one of the key parts of the Roman soldier. It enabled the legionnaires to move and to march together with, with precision. So here Paul encourages us to put on shoes and boots that enable you to proclaim peace in the world. To proclaim the gospel of peace, Paul says. And that is what it is. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. All right. The peace is what it is. It is that very proclamation of peace. And we try to do that. We try to say that proclamation. We put on those shoes every Sunday when we gather for worship. To be made right with our brother and our sister and our neighbor. Before we give our offering, before we come to the table of Holy Communion, we say those words, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. And so we proclaim and we work for peace. And then the next image is this, the shield. And this shield was also important for the Roman soldier. For us it is our faith that acts as a shield. And we know that as, as a strong faith, it's not just kind of an individual faith or a personal act of devotion. In fact, we would say in our church that our faith isn't even ours personally, but the faith is the church's faith. It is not your faith, it is not my faith, but it is our faith together. And so we realize that our faith is much bigger than just ourselves. It is the result of the church that rallies together in the gospel and holds up together all those who are struggling in the world. And then finally we have the sword. The sword of the Spirit, which Paul tells us simply is the Word of God. So strength here is to be healed not in defeating the enemy. Strength here for us is in cultivating and nurturing life and transforming it. And that is what God's Word does. That is what God's Word always does. It brings life. It brings goodness. It brings truth. It brings mercy. It brings peace. And so with all of these things, we're ready for that. We're ready to go into war. And not many of us will find ourselves in situations in which we have to go into literal war. Thank goodness. I mean, I don't envy policymakers who are responsible for defending our nation from those who would attack us. I certainly don't envy those who have had to go into war. But every one of us, you and me, every one of us, we have our battles. We have our battles that we are called to fight. Sometimes we have to battle with our own pride. Sometimes we have to battle with losing a loved one, holding their hand through a long illness, and how we battle with helplessness and weaknesses, but also how we battle in the power of love. When everything we count on for protection fails, God does not fail because we put on God's armor. The hands are still there, not promising for us rescue or promising intervention, but promising only to hold us through no matter what life brings to us. And from that love, Paul wrote, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ. As we move through life, as we move through the changes and face all of the changes and challenges that are before us, which this time of year seems to be many, as we move on to college, as we move on to a new school year, as we move perhaps into a new home, as we move perhaps into a new job or a new position, or as we move into a home that has changed because some have left us in that home. These are also the battles that are waging against us, the battles in which we're called to, to fight. And most of us know what our battles are about, the small wars that we wage, the daily struggle with our hurried and frantic business of our lives. Our captivity to possessions, our slavery to success and winning at all costs. 
Some battle crushing poverty. Some battle crushing affluence. Some battle addiction. Real addiction. Some battle demons of self-doubt and guilt. Some battle memories of broken relationships. Some battle depression. And some are in a true life and death battle with disease. Just mustering the courage to get out of bed and perhaps go to radiation or, or chemotherapy treatments and to do battle, a real battle for just another day. We can't, most of us can't choose our particular circumstances in life. But we can choose how to live. And we can choose what resources to employ, which arsenals to engage. And so we put on these things that Paul asks us to. We put on truth and righteousness and peace and faith and the word of God. And we are given abundance of life in and through all 